Now that we understand the basics of these two pathways, let's talk about a little more strategic issue. Sometimes a company will want to explore two different clinical areas for a product, for example, different areas of surgery. How, how would a company approach the FDA in this situation? Well, there, there are a number of choices um, that a company could follow. You can uh, ask for all of the indications in one time, but that becomes complicated. It may result in a bigger study. It may be more costly, and it may, uh, in some instances, overwhelm the FDA reviewers because there's so many different issues that they're looking at. So in, in a number of situations, companies will use a platform or stepwise approach to uh, seeking clearance or approval for their devices, depending upon whether it's a 510K or a PMA. So you would start with a basic application and then build on that initial clearance or approval through subsequent applications uh, and changes that you make to the device in new generations of the product. Um, with a 510K, for example, um, if a product change could uh, significantly affect safety or effectiveness, you have to file a new 510K. But that decision is up to the company to make. And unless FDA um, becomes aware of, uh, of the change to the product, uh, the company's decision will stand. Now, if, if FDA does become aware, they may question it, uh, and companies need to take steps to be certain that they've uh, established a proper record to support their decision, but it's the company's decision in the initial instance. Um, with respect to a PMA, um, any changes that are made to the product pretty much require the submission of a PMA supplement, so there's less flexibility with a PMA. And, and in fact, companies need to file an annual report with FDA that discloses all changes made within the past year that have not already been reported to FDA. Um, so what that means is that it's generally a little bit easier to uh, make changes to a 510K product and a PMA product, but this stepwise approach can be applicable either with a 510K or a PMA to get the initial um, product through the FDA and then to build upon it. So just to give you an example, um, there's a company called Intuitive Surgical that developed a um, surgical robotic product. Uh, on first glance, FDA said, well, this might be a PMA. So the company went into the FDA with a very simple initial indication uh, showing that the device could hold surgical tools that, that were used during the course of, of uh, various surgical procedures. They got a 510K for that, and then they went back to FDA saying that they would like to seek the next clearance for the robotic device to be used to actually manipulate those surgical tools during the course of an operation. FDA said, well, that might work. You've got a 510K already for the basic holding of the tool. Why don't you go do a study and demonstrate to us that the uh, robotic surgical process works as well as a surgery that's conducted entirely by a, a surgeon? And the company did a fairly extensive and elaborate um, study, but they were able to demonstrate substantial equivalence to FDA, and the agency granted them a 510K for the product, allowing them to make similar changes um, in a more straightforward manner than if the product had been required to obtain a PMA in the first instance.